Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are back with our faction teams. We are on the Wilder account. As you can see, we have almost 20,000 gems here. We also did, if you remember last week, we do not have any of our monthly cards, no deluxe monthly card, no monthly cards, no more diamond cards. So 20,000 gems that we have gotten from last week is just going through with the event, um, going through and pushing all of our Peaks of Time adventures, doing the Voyage, doing the King's Tower, making sure that Arcane Labyrinth and the Bounty Boards are completely done on a daily or um, semi-daily basis as in the Arcane Labyrinth. So overall, chapter 27-20, so we are making a lot of progression. Three of the four faction teams are already into 27. So we'll go ahead, we'll take a quick look at the Wilder team. Also, a lot of people have been asking, what are we going to do when the Wilders are built? So essentially, when I'm getting to the point of putting fodder into the temple, um, putting fodder heroes in there, meaning that we have most of them at five stars, which the Wilder team still has a way to go, we're going to start doing stargazing for exclusively for Taylene. We only need one more copy and we'll have her at Mythic. Then we will continue building the lockout team and also focusing on the Celestials and the Hypogens as we continue our progression. As you can see here, we do have Eron and Lyca, which are two primary carries. We do run Namora with Tassie, which is very, very powerful. Another formation shell. Solus I love, and she does a ton of damage. I want to get her three set bonus here. We have two of three, so hopefully through the summons today, we can actually get a three of three bonus for her. Lorzen is the next hero that we're gonna build. I was going with Gorvo, but we do have Soros. Soros is really powerful as well. With this plus 21 signature item, we're gonna focus on Soros' signature item all the way up to a plus 30. But Lorzen provides a link with the front hero and the back hero. So essentially, when Eron pulls heroes in and does damage to them, we can link a front hero that Eron pulls in to a back hero, essentially doing damage to them as well, which will be really, really powerful. Plus, he provides a survival aspect with the shields that he puts on heroes. So let's go ahead and we'll get into our summons here. Using the bag, I went ahead and used all of our chests. As you can see, we have a lot of T1 stones. We have quite a few Tier 2 stones, so we'll go ahead and use those. As far as our regular Elite stones, we have five here. Look at that, Mahira and Taylene. That will give us enough to get to Mythic. Very, very amazing pull there. And triple Maulers, but look at that. Celestial and a Hypogen. What a pull out of the Elite Stones. That is absolutely phenomenal. Rare Stones, we got 24 here. We just need more food for Lorzen at this point. Lorzen is at the point of food, but we'll go ahead. We'll get these up. Elite plus Mahira, Elite plus Taylene, plus Skarath there. A little bit more Elites there, which provides us a little more food. For the Wilders, we can add another star to Tassie, which brings her to four stars. So she is almost completely done at this point as well. Same with Taylene. We will go ahead and get her up to Mythic, unlocking the super power of her signature item. We might have to take her signature item quite up quite a bit. That way we can start using her. She is the first one that we have on the faction accounts. Also with this one, we don't have any dimensionals yet, but I believe we have enough to purchase her. So we did buy Nakaruru on the Lightbearer account. And as we're adding Taylene and adding additional teams, we should have enough to pick her up as well, which there we go. So we'll exchange. Now we're saving for um, SEO. SEO will be the next one. So we do have her unlocked as well, which again, allows us to change up the formations. So we're actually gonna have heroes that we can use in different formations, which would be nice. That way we're not reliant just in the faction accounts because we are letting Celestial, Hypogens, and Dimensionals into these accounts as needed to continue our progression. So Temple is all set right now, which we got Skarath to with that pull. This is the first account, which is funny because it is the Wilder account. Um, I have never seen Skarath up to Ascended, but there he is, even though it's not on the Mauler account, which would be ideal where he is, or to get him up on that account, he is Ascended at this point. So very, very cool to see him up to Ascended. First account I've ever seen him Ascended, which is crazy. All right, so looking at our summons here, we do have 11 
of our Stargazer cards, 15 scrolls. We have 29 regular scrolls, 200 companion points, 19,000 diamonds. Overall, we are just going to continue with our regular summons for the Wilder heroes so we can continue to build up the Wilders. Only one we're leaving in there is Saurus, just because the 2.5 increase per star is very, very good for him. Most of the other heroes we already have copies of, which let me check Gorvo really quick. I believe for Gorvo, we do have enough copies in there as well. Lorzen, we have enough copies. Cirrus, we have enough copies. So overall, we're going to hit a point where we're just putting other heroes in because Gorvo, we have enough copies. Eron, Lorzen, we have enough. Pretty much everyone. It's kind of looking at this point. We'll put Lorzen back in. Um, we have enough copies to get these heroes up to Ascended, which is awesome to see. So let's start with our summons here. Two full summons. Hopefully we can continue the luck going with just a couple rare cards there. Hoping we can pull a few elites out of here. So we'll look at our regular summons next, which the desired summons, like I said, we're gonna save them just because there's no specific hero we're building. We just need more food at this point. So the more food that we can get out of here, the better to continue building the heroes. And there's our first elite, which is a copy of Cecilia. Super powerful in the Abyssal Expedition, as well as a lot of the campaign stages absolutely destroys the Light Bear Tower. So let's go ahead and get into the diamonds here. Three rares. We need a lot of wilder fodder to get Lorzen up. And there's another elite right there. Copy of Thorin, which Thorin is the hero you actually have to use in the new Fallen Souls. If you have not done it yet, um, he is a hero you have to use in one of the final battles. A lot of people still rely on the Thorin Cheese ability to go ahead and get a lot of heroes down or a lot of campaign progression with the cheese. So we've got a couple more summons here. There's another Elite, which is a copy of Drez. So we're getting a lot of Maulers on this one, but there is our copy of Drez. He is one of the newest heroes, still haven't built him yet. Um, hopefully on the Mauler account, we can get a couple more copies of him. But look at that, six rare cards there. We do have two more summons. So I'm hoping next one will be a decent pull for some Elites. There's our last Elite card, and then we'll do one summon for the Wilders, which is a copy of Anoki, another Mauler. A lot more emblems there, so we'll go ahead and switch this one over to our Wilders. All right, so one summon here, hopefully some Elites, which there we go. Four cards plus an Elite, which we got a copy of Leica there. All right, so overall some very good summons there. Let's go ahead and we'll use our card, which our maximum slots are full again. Gives us another copy of Leica, which will take her to four stars. So she is almost completely done. Same with Tassie. Couple more copies. And then essentially though, when we start getting more copies of heroes, we can begin using them for fodder. If we get more copies of Nomura, if we get more copies of Iran, they will be the fodder heroes because we already have them at five stars. Another copy of Lorzen, very, very nice. As far as the items in the store, we are going to go ahead and save our resources because Ezio is going to be on the way. Making sure you're banking, especially lab tokens. Lab tokens are the most important for getting these heroes. Challenger tokens, we have a ton here, as you can see. So at this point, we're not going to buy red chests. Lorzen, we have enough copies of. Iran, we have enough copies of. Almas, we already have built. So we're going to go ahead and pick up Aziz to add more copies. He is pivotal to the team that we are building, kind of the sub-team outside of the Wilders that we are continuing to build, which there he is, finally unlocked him. My very, very first copy of him. Even though he's really solid with the energy regen, a lot of people don't realize the attack rating reduction that he does, as well as um, his signature item, which is very, very powerful with the burning ground. All right, so here, let's go through our teams really quick. As you can see, we have a lot of food here on this team. Still looking for more copies to build up uh, Estrilda. So her, we just need straight copies for. We already have four Ascended. 
So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we will build Cecilia, like I said earlier, super, super powerful in so many events with the damage mitigation that she can do. So there she is at Legendary. We still have a lot of food to use here. So we will take her up as far as we can, or at least take her to Legendary Plus. She is a hero we know 100% we are going to build. There she is to Mythic. The biggest part with these is using these heroes because these are heroes we are gonna use in the tower. So they're gonna help with the tower progression. Same here, we're gonna go ahead and build Titus if we got a little bit of food, which it looks like we do have a couple. So Titus, we're gonna use the Spider Queen as our food, again, because this is going to allow us to continue our progression through the faction towers, giving us more and more cards. Titus is going to be the next one we're going to build for our off factions here, which is super, super powerful. The CC he provides is substantial when it comes to winning battles. I have a couple couple copies of K-Sauce left, but Titus we want to focus on. Wilders are the most important, which it looks like we have two fodder there. We have a couple copies of Ogi. So we're going to be able to get Lorzen up quite a bit higher. We do have copies um, to take him all the way up to Ascended when we get copies of him available. So essentially, this will be the food for Lorzen, and there he is. So we can unlock his signature item. We'll level up his signature item. So on this go-around itself, we got a ton of heroes up to higher levels. You see, we only have one food with Ogi. We do have Cirrus. We do have uh, four copies of him, four copies of Gorvo couple more copies of Lorzen. So if we decided to use one of those as food, we could, but right now we're just gonna sit tight to get him up to Ascended next time with a little more food. Looking at the Graveborn, here I believe we are building quite a few heroes. Pharrell, Kalthar's on there, Baden's on there, just waiting for more copies. So in this account, since we already have Pharrell, we'll go ahead and we will build Nara with the fodder we have here, because again, Nara is super, super powerful when it comes to the tower. So we'll keep her right there at Legendary Plus. Pharrell and Kalthar, we had Legendary really, really early, but we haven't had an opportunity to get any more copies of them. Taylene at Mythic, super, super powerful. We got another copy of Mahira. Look at that, we have a lot of heroes here, as well as a brand new Dimensional. So making a ton of progress on the Wilder account. Very, very cool to see. So let's go ahead, we'll level up as high as we can. 287, looks like we have a ton of gold, we have a ton of resources. Bring us to 288, I'm thinking we can definitely hit 290, maybe even higher. So there's 289, this takes us to 290. There we go, we got our little promotion pack there. So I believe we have Two more levels, maybe three more levels. So 291, we're burning through a ton of gold and a ton of here we have EXP. 292, this is 293 will be our stopping point. So we might be able to get all the way through this. There we go, just short a little bit on Essence, but 293, which is absolutely phenomenal. That That's a long, long ways. The Oak Inn, we are continuing to focus on our heroes in the workshop. We have one red card there. As you can see, Taylene, we got up a little bit higher, still getting furniture. Um, we have Gorvo, and we have Cirrus, and we have Lorzen in there for the Wilder teams. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and just stick with them right now, because Kaz, we're not really going to build. Um, possibly far down the future, we could. But right now, we are going to go ahead and stick with this team. We have 19,000 Poe Coins. So we'll continue our summons here. Hopefully, we can get lucky with some of these furnitures and continue to get the set bonus that we need. There's a little red twinkle there, which we pick up a piece for Cirrus. Unfortunately, we don't have them. But look at that. Back-to-back -back red ones. It is another copy. A copy for Namora. I have heard overall Namora's Nine-piece bonus is crazy, and people do use it a lot. Um, when Namora's health falls below 60% for the first time, she will use Life Force ability on herself. So increasing her survivability is vital. But the nine-piece, the first time an enemy that's close to her, she activates her effect Beguile, which is her charm. 
So very, very cool. If they come to kill her, she can actually charm them. Look at that, back to back to back red pieces, which here's another piece for Leica, a brand new piece for the multi-shot. That might be her three piece bonus, which would be nice. And we can also, if we don't get Solus here, I do have a red card. Um, we can go ahead and get Solus up a little bit higher. All right, so let's take a look at our team here. So adding a piece here, which is to Leica. I want to see if that gives us our three, only our two set. All right, but the two set we want to focus on is Solus. So here's Solus. We only do have the two set piece with her. So we'll actually pull her third set item. There she is, completely maxed out signature item, which brings her Spectre into play. As you can see, when the Floral Spectre is defeated or its duration on the battlefield expires, which it does get killed a lot, it will transfer itself, transform itself into a spirit that becomes impervious to all attacks for 8 seconds. When Blossom Fall is occurring, the spirit is able to attack enemies. So very, very cool. So even if the Floral Spectre dies, it will still do damage to enemies, which is awesome to see. I want to see the damage output, what it really increases her damage output to. So that is her three set bonus there. Um, I'll miss, we have a little bit of furniture for, but Tassie will continue to auto place, adding a little bit more dodge. Leica, we already placed. Nomura, we got another piece for her, which looking at her, I believe that is, nope, just the one piece. So not too much on there. I believe she has a lot of the Taylene furniture, which she does indeed. So overall, that will conclude it all except Almas. Getting another piece there. So that'll conclude it for the Wilders. At two, up to 20 red pieces of furniture already. So definitely made a ton of progression here. Let's go ahead and look at the heroes themselves. So here is Lorzen. We have 383 of our amplifying or our primordial emblems. We'll go ahead and get him leveled all the way up to plus 10. And I know we have Taylene. I know we have Titus. We have a ton of heroes to continue buying more and more emblems for. But that'll take it to plus 10. 700 amplifying emblems. So we'll have more than enough to go all the way to plus 20. And then red chest, we are focused on Saurus. Source is going to be the priority here. There we go, it's plus 20. When an enemy linked by the Gale Force ability dies, Lorzen will be immune to all damage for five seconds. Increasing his survivability a lot is key to his unlocking his power. So here, Hope's Edge, we want to continue to work on Source. Have 165 chests, so we should be able to add a significant amount of damage, which is in turn going to be a lot more damage to bosses there we go plus 27 signature items so pretty soon hopefully by the end of the event we'll be able to get him to a plus 30 signature item as well as Taylene. we'll go ahead and unlock hers use the rest of the emblems to build her up because even at mythic she will perform very very well overall with her abilities and with her signature item unlocked so a little bit more, we can take it to plus 10. We have more than enough to take it to plus 30, and then we will go for there. So super, super excited about the Wilder team. Um, they are totally ready to destroy the campaign. I've been pushing the Wilder Towers. So we'll go ahead, we'll get them outfitted, we'll get their gear all set. We have two of them already with their three-piece bonuses. Almas, unfortunately, we had to bench, not doing too well. But I would definitely like to try out Lorzen for quite a few stages, see how well he does. So we'll go ahead, we'll get them all ready. Let's see strengthening gear here. I believe we do have our couple tier stones, which even there, look at that, doubling the hit points, adding 3,000 attack, doubling the defense, and adding 30 more accuracy to the helmet. Ton more damage there. I believe that might be about everything that we have. Tier 2, Tier 2. I believe we do have some tier two stones here, adding hit point, attack, and defense. And I don't believe we have anything else except to change the factions, which we'll go ahead and use a reset scroll. 
currently have no heroes that can use it. Wilders, there we go. So even just resetting the item, as you can see, gave her a significant improvement to her stats. Tassie the same, so the gear is kind of mismatched when it comes to overall, but we'll get the team all set and get ready for our campaign push. We're on 27-20, so let's go ahead and we'll get into the campaign. So here we are on 27-20. Fighting the Mauler team versus the Wilder team. The Maulers do get an advantage over the Wilders, and they absolutely destroy our team. So here it just takes kind of some RNG uh, to go ahead and get our crowd control down, which we get a quick victory there. Let's look at the damage. 14 million, 7 million from Laika. Laika with her plus 20 signature item doing some significant damage. 27-24 as we go through the boss stages. We're moving Nomura up front. That way we can pick up Silvana. Silvana is easy to go ahead and take care of if you can get to her. If she goes to the back line, very devastating to your team. 10 million here, 7 million from Leica, doing very, very well. 27-28, so we're almost halfway through here. We have Eron versus Eron. Um, Arden is the tough one to deal with here, but with the banish, we did banish Morella. We brought in... Uh, Arden right into the group, got a perfect heal there to go ahead and get five kills from Eron, which is why we absolutely love him. 17.29 million damage, completely just destroying the team, bringing us to 2732. Again, dealing with Arden on this one, the only thing you have to be careful with is with Thorin. When Eron pulls in Thorin, um, there is a possibility that he will just one-shot everybody with the Thorin Cheese. We put on Soros for this one to get it done. 20 million damage there from Eron. We are going to try out Lorzen. Um, I tried him on a couple stages, had no luck. Here's Lorzen in, and he links the essentially two heroes, which actually we're going to take him out for this one. Um, let's try Solus. I tried this one a lot with Lorzen. Didn't have an opportunity to get it done, and I'm pulling Brutus to the bottom to banish him. There's a, there's a second banish on Brutus. This is the only way the Wilder team has been able to deal with Brutus, is the banish. So so that's really your trick there. 15 million damage there. Um, I did try Lorzen quite a few times. We could never get that stage down. That's why I swapped him back out. Um, he links the front enemy and the back enemy. The problem that I found is he continues to link the enemy that's banished in the front, which doesn't help at all. So if the front enemy is essentially together with the back enemy, he's banished so he doesn't take any damage, which kind of defeats the purpose of Florizen. Here we continue our push, which again, stacking all of the enemies up for Iran. Laika goes ahead and does her debuff. Let's look at the damage on this one. 18 million, doing a ton of damage. Bring us to 27-48, so we're almost through chapter 27 at this point. Let's swap Eron to the back. Pull in some heroes, but here we get banished. It seems like for the, the Wilder team, fighting against Hassie is very, very difficult, and fighting against Brutus is very, very difficult. Uh, most of the other heroes I don't seem to have much problem with, but this team trying to catch Tassie especially with like his debuff. That's our second defeat right there. We got Soros in here. Let's try to pull in Laika to try to actually take her out right there. Double banish in the very top. Our team gets destroyed again. Let's try him on the top. That way we can pull in Lucius. We can pull in, see the, the banish there. The bottom team, the bottom heroes are not even giving us an opportunity to do any damage. They're just, Soros is getting destroyed. Let's try them in the bottom. We'll try to pull in all three of them, which we do. As you can see right there, the specter is up, but we are getting destroyed. So after about 35 attempts on that one, that'll do it for the Wilder team. We pushed almost through entirely through chapter 27, which is phenomenal. Got a ton of boss stages down. I believe we're at 27-48 right now. 27-48. So let me know in the comments which thing. Super stoked to add Lorzen in that lineup. We just need to get a little bit more food so we can get him up to Ascended. And as always, thank you guys for watching.